Face Transformer Construction was basically the low voltage type construction of a transformer. Um, we use shell type. So how are we going to construct? Well, let's suppose you have a material. We need a material to wrap up the winding, right? Now you think about the permeability concept. I talked about the iron core, higher permeability material, could be stainless steel, etc. So we need a material where we can wrap up the winding. So the first, let's start simple, that we have the primary winding here. Wrapped on a central limb. Why central limb? Well, it can be any limb, can be outer limb, can be center limb, but it would be more convenient and safer if we have wounded this on a cent central limb for comfortable handling purposes. Then we need to apply the masking tape, a simple tape. Well, first of all, why we need a tape? Well, we need a tape to apply the secondary winding on top of it. Well, this might look like a fantastic short circuit. Well, we need another masking tape to protect the secondary winding again. But now, a lot of questions. First of all, before asking question, when I talked about the primary winding, what this is made of? Well, it is a simple copper conductor. Complete. It is a copper conductor with enamel insulate. It has insulation on it. So first, the copper conductor must be enameled, insulated. Second, we need to apply the masking tape, which means the secondary winding on top of it will be separated or would have uh, insulation to the primary winding. So we are dealing with the low voltage transformers. So these are the basic simple laboratory based experiments. So that's why I'm depicting the same thing on my lectures to make sure we are consistent. So what are the questions? So let's start with the first question on the left hand side. The windings are made of what? Well, if they are made of copper conductor, incorrect. The windings are made of copper conductor with enamel insulation. You can't have a, just a copper conductor because it may create a fantastic short circuit if the copper conductors are not insulated. Why windings are wound on top of each other? Well, it is because we want to improve the flux linkage, the mutual induction, we want to reduce the leakage flux. That's why we want primary and secondary on top of each other. Why we need a masking tape? Well, what if the enamel insulation breaks due to heat? The masking tape is a little extra protection. It's not the best protection. It's a little extra protection to separate the primary winding from the secondary winding. And the low voltage transformer, about 24 to 8 volt step down transformer, for example. And if you talk about high voltage or nominal voltage, we have to use a good insulation material. Oil can be used as a good insulation material, but also a cooling methods, because there will be heat in the transform. Cursor is here. All right. 
The fourth question is why we need the core in any way. What is core? Well, core is a material. We need that material where we can wound the windings, number one. Number two, we want to concentrate the flux, magnetic flux, or to reduce the reluctance. So we need the core, but also to avoid the vibrations between primary and secondary winding due to the pulsating MMF. So one of the common questions people ask, why transformer vibrate? Well, it is because of the alternative current or time-changing magnetic fields or time-changing forces. So we need the core to actually handle those windings more effectively. That's why the transformers normally are made of uh, with high weight to, to be stable. And our fifth question, or I think, yeah, fifth question is why laminating the core? What does the word laminate mean? Well, that means you have a piece of material. Let's say you have an iron or stainless steel. You cut that material into small pieces, insulate each piece with respect to each other, and in this way you reduce what? The loss. Which loss? We call it AD current loss. So the purpose of laminating the core is to reduce the AD current loss. What this loss is all about? Well, this loss is called uh, or can be defined as a, as a circulating current. Now remember, there is a flux linkage going on. And that flux linkage would produce the current in the core of a material. In order to reduce that flow of current or induced current in the core of material, what we do, we try to cut the material into small pieces. Smaller the pieces, lesser the eddy current losses would be. So what this core, now my sixth question is, what this core is made of and why? Well, this core can be made of iron core, but you need a high permeability of a material. So stainless steel is a good, or that has a high permeability, or more specifically, I could say, it has a high relative permeability, stainless steel. To reduce what and why? Well, we have a term called hysteresis loss. Because if the material, let's say iron core, that stores energy, then it would react to the main supply voltage. So what we have to do, we have to reduce that storage of the magnetic magnetism in the material. And that's why we use stainless steel core. And these are my answers. Of course, you can read and go through a number of times. But of course, uh, this is not a perfect transformer. Not uh, any transformer can be 100% perfect, except if it is an ideal transformer. So, what are the losses in a realistic single-phase transformer? Well, one is a copper loss. Everybody knows that I square R loss because of the resistance of the material. And the second is the hysteresis loss, which are associated with the arrangement and rearrangement of the magnetic domains in the core during each half cycle of alternative current, they are complex, nonlinear, and create harmonics, distortion to the supply current. They are proportional to the supply frequency. If you have 60 hertz frequency and 50 hertz frequency, 
at 60 hertz, it would have a higher hysteresis losses compared to 50 hertz. So if you are buying a transformer, you want to utilize in the United Kingdom at 50 hertz, you might get a little bit better efficiency compared to the use of the same transformer in the United States that has a 60 hertz, or that has a lower voltage, 120 volts. So eddy current losses are circulating currents produced by a transformer action or mutual induction in the core, slicing the core into many laminations and insulated from each other will reduce the magnitude of the eddy currents by providing smaller paths. Eddy currents power losses are inversely proportional to the square of the lamination or number of laminations. So more number of laminations, less of the losses would be, eddy current losses would be, and they are proportional to the square of the supply current uh, frequency. So there will be more eddy current losses if you increase the frequency. So here the trend is that the transformer ideally should be operated at a lower frequency because it would contribute more hysteresis losses, more eddy current losses if you operate the same transformer at higher frequency. Leakage flux, the flux which escaped from the core and that passed through only one of the windings and not contributing to the mutual induction is called leakage flux. We call it skipped flux. The fringing loss, which is due to the air uh, gaps. So we try to reduce the air gap. That's why we had the primary coil, secondary coil on top of each other to reduce the fringing loss, but also to reduce the leakage flux. Example questions, what are the two types of core construction of a single phase transformer? Well, it's a core and shell type. The core and second question says, is the core of a single phase transformer is typically made of silicon steel material. It has high permeability to reduce which of, which of the following loss that's associated with the rearrangement and rearrangement of the magnetic domains in the core during each half cycle of alternative current. But of course, as we have already talked about it, it's just a slow. A single phase transformer is an electrical machine that would operate using the pulsating MMS. Is it true or false? Well, alternative current is pulsating, time changing. Yes, it's true. It cannot be static. It cannot be rotating. Unless if you want to create a single phase induction motor. So it's true. Question number four, it says 